In this video, we're going to create the particle system and make a few little changes. So I figured out a bug in the previous version. So if you go to the enemy script here, uh, what could have happened when we had this here originally is that if you hit the enemy with something like the shotgun, it is going to take maybe one to eight hits. And if it took more than one, uh, then maybe the third one gets rid of it deals all this stuff and then it's still got this yield here and so it just stands back up and starts walking but then it doesn't move anymore so all we're going to do is remove this line from here you can copy and paste it and put it down here so under where it says if move we're going to put that there and that will make it so the enemy doesn't um, get back up and start walking after they're dead so that's a small fix for that one um, for the particle system though, I've gone ahead and made this already and I'm just going to go through it. So I'm using CPU particles. Um, they're a little bit more straightforward to use and we just want some cubes. So this is going to be pretty simple. This is what it's going to look like. And it's nothing too fancy. I'm just going to go through my settings for this. So all I've got in here is this and I'm going to add a simple script at the end um, after we go through at all. So uh, things that I've changed here. So CPU particles, I've called a blood and uh, we are going to turn, well, that's going to turn off automatically. The amount is up to you. Okay. You could, it starts off with eight. I just switched it up to a random number. The lifetime I put at 0.3. Again, you can change that if you want it to stick around for longer. Uh, maybe 0.6 might be better. And then it goes down like that. Um, one shot, you want to tick that. Um, explosiveness, I've turned up to one. That means that it's all going to happen at once. Um, you don't want to shoot and have it kind of work like that. It'll look really strange. Um, you can play around with that though, but I figured just put it all the way at one. Um, under drawing though, under mesh, I have selected a cube mesh and then clicking on that mesh, I've set the scale to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So it's pretty tiny hide that. Um, under emission shape, I've set the shape to box. It doesn't really matter. Um, you could actually just set it to point. It would do the same. Actually, yeah, set it to point. Yeah, that's fine. Set it to point. Um, flags, I clicked a line Y, but there's no uh, big deal there. It just makes it kind of, they're just going to rotate uh, on the Y axis depending on which way they're moving. Um, for the direction, I turn the spread up to 180. So it's going to kind of go all directions around. Um, the gravity I left the same. Initial velocity, I turned to one. Um, and what's the original? It's like zero. So I set that if you have it at zero. Oops. And do that, it just does that. So I've set the initial velocity to one and It'll give them some movement. Um, and then most of those other ones I left, I didn't play around with this one or damping or angle or I did play around with scale. I put it down to 0.1 and scale random to 0.5. Um, the color, I, I changed the color in here, but I'm just wondering if I change the color here, uh, let's just make it blue, see if it comes out like purple or something. So let's, mm, yeah, I'm not sure what the color there does. So I'm just going to um, leave it at white. Hue variation, let's play around with that and see what happens. Uh, I think whatever that hue variation is, it's related to the color here. So I'm just gonna leave that. Um, animation, I didn't worry about. None of these other settings I've worried about. So that's pretty much it. Make sure you turn on one shot. But there is a problem is that it doesn't automatically emit um, when you when you instance it into the into the map. Uh, so we have to write some code to, to make it emit and we're gonna do that in a second. So I'm saving this, then I'm going back to my shotgun. Now I'm only gonna make the hit scan weapons do this. So that's these ones with the gun script on it. And this here is the, the code. So there's a few things that I've added and I've just marked them, but I'll go through them. The first one is to preload that variable in. So on ready var blood equals preload 
and then the scene that we just created. So we can reference it later on. It's similar to the muzzle flash, it's pretty much the same thing. We're just gonna instance it at a different point in time. So then I've got this line here. So this is under where the enemy takes damage. We check that the ray cast is here, it's in the group. Um, enemy, they take damage, and then immediately after that, var new blood equals blood dot instance printing. That was just me testing, I need that. Get node root world dot add child. Now, the reason this is important is if we just add it as a child of the gun, uh, when we move, um, it's it's going to be it's going to move with us, and it will be very strange. So we're going to add it to the the world node, which is back here. So we can say get node forward slash root forward slash world dot add child new blood, and then we can set its position. So it's new blood dot global transform dot origin equals ray dot get collision point. So we're going to get the point that it collides at and do that. Now, the last thing I said I was going to do was actually make it start emitting. So new blood dot emitting equals because it's one shot, it should only happen once. Um, and I'm wondering if, yeah, see, there's no no, there's no signal for it to, uh, when it's finished emitting. So I think it may stay in the sea forever. I'm not too sure, but it's not emitting anything, so it's not really going to uh, do much. So let's go ahead and test that. Hit play. Switch to this gun. There we go. It worked. And cool. And now, if I test that again, with this gun, okay, we get the particles and it still explodes. So that's all working pretty good. And we'll leave it at that for this video and um, I'll make a few more in the next week.